We are now at 12.30 on our schedule, and next up is Jim Drew talking about not just a modem, but a Wi-Fi modem for the Apple II. Ta-da. Hey, good morning. <laughs> Welcome. Well, thanks for having me. Um, this is my uh, first KFest ever. Um, I am, uh, as people know, I'm with cbmstuff.com, and I've been a Commodore person since the uh, late 70s, actually. So don't crucify me. Um, but I am making some uh, crossover products now. And one of them is called the Y modem. Uh, 232. It came from the original Y modem that I did for the Commodore 64. And uh, what a Y modem is, it is a very small device, and it is a complete Wi-Fi modem. And so what is a Wi-Fi modem? Well, if you remember the old school days of actual modems with landlines, uh, this emulates it exactly. And not just a little bit, but 100%. So there's quite a few different little uh, Wi-Fi devices now for various computers, and people have asked me all right away, what's the difference between this Wi-Fi type modem and everybody else's? And my biggest um, answer for that really is the fact that I designed this from day one to be a complete 100% emulation of a real modem. And so in that regard, you can actually run a BBS with it. And so you're going to find there's quite a few BBSs out there right now running on real Apple hardware and other hardware using the Wi-Fi uh, capabilities of this product, which is a Y modem 232. So this um, product is, um, geez, it's like five years old now. Um, I've had it uh, out for 64 for five years. I've had this one out for a little over three years now. And so I'm not a flunky and when it comes to hardware design and stuff, um, I did work with Apple stuff in the past. Um, I worked for Central Point Software. People know Copy2. Um, I worked for that company, and I actually wrote Copy264 um, for the 64 side. And I also worked on the Laser128 uh, project, which a lot of people didn't know that Central Point Software actually did all the ROM code for that. So I worked on the ROM code for it. So I've got a little bit of history with Apple products, and uh, uh, not as much as everything else, but it gives me enough of an idea of how all this stuff works. And when I was working, testing, on my Apple IIe and stuff, I had to go revisit things like card slots and all that. And so um, setting up a super serial card and so uh, it was uh, kind of a blast from the past for me. It was nice. So um, the Y modem 232 itself is capable of handling 300 baud through uh, one megabod. Obviously you can't go that fast on the older computers, um, but it has the capability if you wanted to on modern computers to go that fast. Like I said, because it has 100% of the Hayes compatible command set, um, it actually has all the S registers too, all the hidden registers, all the various things that you were going to find at a US robotics modem. Um, they're all emulated. And so it has auto answer um, set up as well. So you can run your BBSs. So the Wi Fi part is not a phone line. So you have to be able to connect this to your router. To do that, I have three different uh, ways you can connected to your router. Um, if you've got a WPS button on your router, you can push the button on the router and you can simply type AT asterisk WPS and it goes out and finds your router and automatically sets up the connection for you. So you don't have to do anything at all for typing in um, an SSID. You also have the option of typing an SSID manually. SSID is your router uh, information, your router um, name and then your password. And it supports all the different encryption mechanisms, um, um, WEP, and then TKIP, AES. Um, and then the third option is um, if you've got some strange router name and password, um, like upper lower case and funny symbols and stuff, um, you can't really type those in so much with um, your standard old school keyboards. and Like with Commodore or Apple, um, character sets not really available for some of the characters. So you can type in an AT asterisk N and it'll show you all the different Wi-Fi networks that are available. And you can type in AT asterisk NS and the number next to that and it'll actually uh, enter the data for you. Um, so you can set up your, your router that way, which makes it easy uh, for setting up your router. So for the um, Apple series, if you've got uh, a super serial card, 
uh, you'll need to set up the dip switches for a modem. Now, this is the biggest um, problem I face with, with the Apple crowd, really, is everyone seems to be using an SSC. And so the dip switches are typically set for using an ADT Pro software setup, which is usually a null modem cable. And so a null modem cable is not the same as a null as a modem cable. So null is reversed. And same thing with the uh, settings on the super serial card. Let me uh, grab one real quick here. So everyone knows what this is. So you're going to see some dip switches over here. And what you'll need to do is change the dip switches to be a modem configuration as opposed to a no modem configuration. And on my website forum, I actually have a picture of this. And you can set up your dip switches to be exactly like this. This is how you would set it for a real modem. So if you're going to use a landline with a Hayes modem or an Apple modem or whatever, you might have a Supra or Okidata or all the different companies that made modems. This would be the same configuration you'd use for, for it as well. And so this particular card, um, if you're familiar with how these work, this actually plugs into the back plane or screws into it. And your Y modem would plug into here, except that on the Super Serial card, because you've got two of the same connector, you need a gender changer. So you'll need to have a gender changer for that. And I actually have those available as well. So, um, over here to my manual. I did not test this exactly to see if this works. Huh? I think you probably see that okay. So in the manual, I have basically a setup installation, um, how you power it. So you power it through a USB device. Um, I use an actual portable battery station. You can plug it into a wall adapter like I uh, use for your Apple iPad or whatever. So it's a standard uh, USB cable uh, type A at the one end. And on the Y mode itself, I used a mini B connector. And I did that on purpose because the micro connectors, I seem to break off all the time. So the mini B connectors are very robust. And so you can connect it to it and you can swing it over top of your head and it won't break off. So um, let me fast forward through here. So our manual discusses it here. Make sure you use a uh, five volt power supply with it. Anything else can damage it. Um, one thing I do offer on everything that I manufacture is a lifetime warranty. So if you damage it for any reason, you plug it in backwards, whatever, I'll replace it. You just pay for the shipping. Um, accidents happen. So I know people don't go out and do things on purpose. So once you plug in the, the Y modem, set up your super serial card, you'll have to use a terminal program. And for the Apple II, I've been using ProTerm 3.1. Uh, there's a variety of different programs you can use. And I seem to think that uh, ProTerm has a lot of great features. Uh, it supports um, higher baud rates than some other terminals do. And so that's what I end up using. Um, so once you connect it, you'll, you can type an ATI, which is going to give you a actual command that will show information about the, the modem itself. It'll show a copyright date and information about the firmware version. Now, the firmware version here on this manual is old. We're actually at 3.05 right now. And uh, it'll basically tell you that there's no router connected. So you can see there's no router. And at that point, you need to enter your information, as I set up. So there's a walkthrough on setting up the internet connection with the WPS setup, like I discussed earlier, um, or you can do the asterisk n to give yourself a list of all the different networks that are available it'll show you something like this where there's you know your net gear or whatever you've got for your router names and then you just enter your commands in, in place and voila there's an led on the y modem and there's two different versions i offer one with the display and one without a display the display is kind of handy for telling you the router status and your connection status what you're connected to as well um, it's not required. The LED itself will ch change color based on what's going on with your Y modem. So for um, a, a router that's not connected, it's red. The router is connected, it's yellow. And then an online connection is actually green. So if you do the example set up here, it, if you type in ATDT, which is our old school you know, attention dial tone, which we don't have tone anymore, 
Um, we kept the um, terminology the same, so it's compatible with old terminal software. Uh, you can see that there's this google.com, and that's a port number. So that's the way it works with um, Wi-Fi connections. We don't have a telephone number. We actually have a URL and a colon and a port number. If you type this in, you'll actually connect to Google server. Not that it'll give you any data back, but at least it gives you an idea if it's connected or not. And then just like the old school, um, type plus, 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 and that gets you uh, back into command mode. And then you can type in ATH to hang up the modem, which is like the old school commands. I mean, literally, if you're familiar with a modem from back in the day, this is exactly like running a real modem. There is no difference whatsoever. So I have support literally, like I said, all the different command sets that are available. Um, and there's a whole list in the manual. And so you'll see like every single command that ever was. And then all the ones that are in blue, um, are, these are commands that are Y modem uh, specific. So you can actually have a phone book built into this. And some of the modems back in the day had a phone book. And they all use different um, methodology to get to access the phone book. And I just chose one um, that's similar to the Hayes, um, the robotics, um, the USR robotics modems. So, and so you'll see all the different commands that are in here. Again, blue is all the commands that are the Y modem specific. So for ATI, you get basic information, and then you have extended information about like the CPU that's used on the Y modem, how much connection time there's been, uh, static IP information. Now, one thing you can do, because you can set this up to, for a real um, modem emulation for a BBS, is that if your router doesn't have port forwarding, um, you can use um, a DNS resolver. Um, I use um, IP.com, or noIP.com it's called. And so I actually have my own IP address now set up for the, the YMY modems. I'm going to run a BBS off of it. Um, in fact, I might use my Apple II to do it since it's just sitting here by itself. And uh, you can actually set up an actual hard-coded IP address if you want to. Uh, you don't have to. It'll actually DNS resolve correctly. But if you needed to for some reason, if you're behind a firewall or something like that, you can actually set it up. Uh, and this will actually show you information about your static IP information. You can set the network modes, the sub mask, all that exactly like um, you need to for doing your um, your firewall setup. So the real ticket for getting true emulation for any kind of modem is really supporting all the S registers. So there's a bunch of S registers that aren't listed in the manual. They're all supported. There's I think there's 93 of them total. And so they're all supported. The one that matters the most is going to be your ATS0, which is the auto answer for your, your modem, and then escape character, character turn, line feeds, and, and backspace characters. Sometimes these are changed by BBS programs, um, so you can't accidentally get into the BBS like by typing plus 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 into it. So other characters um, that might need to be changed to are like Exxon. Um, Two minutes. Character. Two minutes. OK. So. Um, Basically, there's a gazillion commands for it. Um, there's troubleshooting into this as well. And uh, there's Q&A for it. I have a, a forum for this whole thing. Um, it's rather involved, actually, for what it can support. Um, but it's something that I really wanted to do so you can actually run BBS. And there's quite a few Apple BBSs actually are running a little harder right now with it. And some other pretty famous ones for like color stuff, like particles and such, are running on it. So. So that is your Y modem 232. And if I have any questions about it, one thing I wanted to give you a quick blurb on is um, when I had signed up for KFest, I wanted to mention something else I was working on for Apple. And this is a little board. It's called the 65 XT. It's actually a 48 megahertz uh, 6502 emulator. And it's something I'm tinkering right now with the uh, Apple II for support. And it also does diagnostics, so you can test out your Apple or any other computer. So, we had a so question. any questions? We had a question about HTTPS support. As far as uh, secured socket layer stuff? Yes. It actually has basic support for it, and you can actually pull files from a server. Something I didn't really go into about this as well is that this Y modem actually has three megs of memory on it. And so I actually have software for the Commodore 64 right now that you can actually run it as a hard drive. 
And so if somebody wanted to write some software for the Apple, you could actually have a hard drive and you could actually pull files um, from the internet directly to the device and actually upload it from your computer you know, to a server and it supports um, HTTPS as well. Anyway, somebody asked about any U drive news. Oh, microdrive. Yeah, that's another thing. So during this COVID lockdown thing, it's amazing how much you can actually get done. Um, so yeah, my microdrive, um, that's a device. It's not going to be for Apple. Um, I don't think I can make it work with Apple stuff at all, unfortunately. But microdrive is a simple um, drive replacement. And it's like Commodore 1541 drive, the uh, ZX81 um, kick drive emulator. It emulates basically every kind of drive you can imagine, Tandy's um, disk drive two, the Atari 1050 uh, external drives. It's a little tiny device as well. So I'm, I've got it almost ready to go to production as well. All right, well that's time then. So okay. uh, thank you for your presentation. Thanks. And other questions can go to the channel on Discord for this. Yep, I'll hop over to Discord right now. Thanks, I appreciate it.